Hello Advark, I'm very excited to share with you guys the videos that we've been taking, we've been editing it and we've been working on it, on it really hard. So we are ready to share with you guys the five day journey we just had. And we're gonna start with day one in Gondor. Hi, we'll meet up up in the, with the cars. <laughs> Right here, and then we go to the hotel, uh, get into our room, lunch, and then we go into the Gunder City. Yes. Good? Yes. 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 So, all good? Mm. We have about a 20 to 15 minute drive, about 20 minutes, right? Sorry, guys, I didn't introduce Steve. This is, uh, he'll be filming us throughout the whole trip, so. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Gonda is really one of the amazing places to visit as there is nothing like it in Africa. And Gonda is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Goa Hotel is a great place to stay for an amazing panoramic view and also the staff is amazing. It's one of the nicest hotels in Uganda. So the castles that we're going to right now were built about 400 years ago and the whole family built different castles right next to each other so it's like one huge compound, the royal compound and so that's what we're going to be visiting right now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In 17, 18, 19, 20. This is the first photo spot. As someone that spent a year in Israel after high school, I love having the group in Ethiopia going through the same journey that I once did. And it's amazing that they get to travel to different places and experience culture and history. You can see the first building here. Uh, it used to be a palace for the King Fasilides. We forgot to film the introduction of our guide, By Fanta. the way, it's a ground plus three floors palace. So the first one is basement. Inside the basement, there are rooms which is used for different purposes during that time, like kitchen room, banquet hall and traditional beer were made inside there. During the king time, when he made rule and regulation, he was sat from that small balcony. Can you see that? The last floor, it was sleeping quarter for the royal family. So here you can see uh, the first king name, uh, which is written by the Amharic and also here is, there is an English word also. By the way, there is also his ruling time. Uh, here there is Giz number, which is Ethiopian calendar. 
Over here, for people that might get a little bit confused, let me quickly explain what Ethiopian calendar and time for you guys. Ethiopia calculates the birth of Jesus Christ differently from Western calendars. So in Ethiopia right now, 2016, not 2024. Uh, and also we have different calendar of our own as old Egyptian calendar that is 12 months of 30 days. Uh, 13th month of five days or six days on a leap year and that's our calendar and the other one is over here it's the European calendar <laughs> and Sheba came from Ethiopia that's our belief and the Queen of Ethiopia, they had a son called Menelik the First uh, in the Ethiopian tradition. He was the first king. Therefore, since then, our kings said they're descendants of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. So one of the ways that they show their descendants is the star of David. Uh, they're not Jewish, but they're showing their descendants from King Solomon. And also in Addis and a bunch of places, you'll see a lion. So the lion of Judah. So that's our kings. Even here we'll see a cage, uh, like an area where they kept lines for that. So in addition to this, you know, the dynasty itself, it calls Solomonic dynasty. So uh, as uh, the Jew explained, because of that, Ethiopian kings claim that we are the descendant of King Solomon. That's why they put the Star of David over here. So now we are the first floor and the first room, it was a reception room, this one. And the second one is, uh, it was dining room for male and for female. So when you see the ceiling, some part of the wall, it was restored in 1996. So uh, this is the only wood which is the original one, but the other one is, it's a new one. Okay, so this is a um, male dining room. So most of the time you can see people, they meet round table and then more than seven people which is sit around the table and then they eat in jera, which is together. Bursha, that means people, they have a piece of injera and then they scoop from different sauce and then they feed his uh, wife or his friends. So this one is for male and that one is for female. Ethiopia and Judaism, or Ethiopia and Israel, have a long history. I mean, there is data that, you know, even Ethiopia and Israel had trade relations even be before King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. And since then, there's a bunch of different places that Ethiopia has mentioned. So we have a long history with Israel and connection. So Fasi let us build the big one. His son Johannes built over there the smallest building, and his uh, Fasilides' grandson, as well as Johannes' son, his name is Yasu, uh, came to this period and then he ruled the country for 24 years. He built his own palace over here. During the Second World War, Italy tried to invade Ethiopia, and one of the places that they used as a hiding spot or the troops and stuff was the royal compound in Gondor. And therefore, when you walk around the the compound you see a lot of ruins and that's because that's the bombing that happened when the British were helping Ethiopia and they bombed on the Italians trying to get them out of there. You know uh, over there there is another building it was archive as well as library uh, during Fasilides time it was built and then different documentation were uh, documented over there. Fasilides grand grandson Great grandson, his name is Dawit, came to the power. Then he built music hall over there. Can you see that? And lion cage over here. So there was a lion here. The metal party was restored during Haile Selassie time. So a lion is a symbol of power and a symbol of Lion of Judah. That's why Ethiopian kings, during their ruling time, they keep their animals from their compound. So now we'll go to the music hall that will show you Ethiopian shoulder dance as well as Eskista. Ha, ha, ha.
Second, in 1855, reunited Ethiopia to the current shape that it's in and became the first king of kings. So essentially everybody ruled, everybody ruled their area, but Tedros became king of kings. Okay, so after Bekafa, his son, uh, his name is Yasu II, came to the power. Yasu II, when he came to the power, he was young, he was eight years old, so because of his age, he couldn't rule the country. Finally, his mother, her name is Mintawab, she came to the power as regent him, then she built the last palace in this compound. Ethiopia has had many strong female leaders. Recent history, Minilik's wife, after he passed away, she led Ethiopia for a few years. And even right now, our president is female, and she's really seen as the mother of Ethiopia. This is Fasilides swimming pool. Fasilides, which is, uh, he built the pool also at the same time when he built the palace. So which is two kilometers far from his residence. Why he tried to move here? Because of water. Outside the wall, there is a river. In order to use that river, uh, that's why he came to here and then he built the pool. Still, we use the place uh, for the festival. We do have uh, a festival all over Ethiopia, that's in January 19. There is Epiphania, as well as we call that Mkat. <laughs> the pool, uh, when it's filled by water, it's uh, 2.5 meter deep. And when you measure, uh, it's 50 meter by 30 meter width. The main reason why the king he built because it's a recreation site for the royal family. Uh, this swimming pool compound was not only used as a royal recreational swimming pool, but the backyard area is used as a horseback riding and also sports and different activities. It was a huge area. That was very impressive. I'm very proud of you guys. Sisters restaurant is one of the great places to take people in Gondor for dinner and for dancing and Ethiopian traditional food. But the amazing part about it is started by the four sisters with the help of 
a foreigner that was lived in Ethiopia. Which bread? In the injera. In injera. In injera in 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 making. With injera, it was all it was all people traditionally making. Injera, bread flour. <laughs> How long does it take to make the injera? Injera is uh, three days. When did your passion for cooking begin? Look at myself. Me, the young woman. Not mama house together, family house. Cook the chickpeas, injera, not a uh, uh, local traditional food. Uh, Ten years, twelve years. So traditionally, when you're like young, especially female, yeah. uh, mostly female, like when you're young, about ten, your mom will tell you to do different things, the easy ones, like roasting the coffee or doing the like simple ones, and then you slowly graduate into making the traditional doro, the chicken what. Yeah. I learn all people is one, 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 and one, 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 one. I like dance, no problem. Finish the dinner, I learn the meal. Everyone, don't drink it yet. We'll explain in one second exactly. Okay. What is it? Hey. So, two things. First of all, uh, we're going to raise a toast. Together, this is a local traditional alcoholic beverage. Um, it is honey, it's alcohol honey. First thing, so we're gonna raise the toast together uh, for a fantastic trip. You are now under Aardvark programming, and in Aardvark programming, there is no alcohol. We are now providing this as a nice gesture because it's a local traditional alcohol. If a bar, if one of the guys comes to you and says, Would you like a beer? The answer is, I'm not allowed. Yeah. The answer is, I'm not allowed, but thank you, I appreciate it. You're the man. That is it. That is the answer that is acceptable. All together, we're going to raise a toast. Okay. We're really excited to be having this first uh, international trip with you. Uh, it's also a massive pleasure to be here, and it's also an amazing experience. Also for Rachel, who is her first time in Ethiopia, and for all of us, really getting to be fully like in this experience, enjoying it. We hope that you guys make the most of this experience, learn as much as you can, enjoy as much as you can, be curious, and really make the most of what we have to offer. <laughs>
one of the main parts of the experience is also for a second thinking about it, processing it, talking about it, because you have a lot of things out here today. We think that a very important part for you would be also maybe like for a second thinking about it, seeing other people's perspective and hearing how people experienced it. We ended out every day with a daily reflection where the group got to sit around and talk about their experience in Ethiopia and what they enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed day one and for you guys on the trip, I hope this was a good reflection, a good time, a good memory for you guys. Please like, comment below, let me know what you guys think. Uh, and if you're on the tour, let me know what experiences, what memories you're still remembering right now or any thoughts that you have. Tomorrow we're releasing day two. 